But let's welcome Mike Elias onto the program, joining us from the GM meetings. Mike, way to go, man. Congratulations. Hey, thanks, Matt. Good morning. It's, uh, it's, it's not a surprise to us that you won this award because, uh, look, we followed the journey of this year's Orioles team, the years that you put together prior to kind of reaping the fruits of your success this year. So not a surprise to us, but walk us through your year and uh, the challenges, the celebrations that you had in 2023. It was a very memorable year. Uh, the regular season was just amazing. I mean, we were dreaming about reaching those heights when we started the rebuild in, in 2019 and to win 101 games, have some of the individual seasons, you know, that we had from Gunnar Henderson, Adley Rutschman, um, the whole group. Uh, it was really a pleasure. Um, it's been just really gratifying seeing uh, Baltimore, the city of Baltimore and, the, and Maryland back as a, as a baseball capital like it should be. Um, seeing Camden Yards back alive in our city. They love this group of players. Um, so it was a terrific regular season. We came up very short in the playoffs, and um, you know, I think it's keeping us hungry as we start this offseason. But uh, definitely a season to remember, and the recognition for uh, our front office and our organization is really meaningful to me. Hey, Mike, uh, I got a chance to come to Baltimore. You toured me around. I got a chance to meet your staff. Incredible people. Just a fantastic time I was there. Uh, and like most people would say, well, I want to give credit to everybody else, but you really did build some great people around. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the folks that you have working around you and how they all came about? Yeah, that's nice to hear. Thanks. I feel the same way. It's just a really um, pleasant working atmosphere. We've got a lot of uh, really dedicated, hardworking, uh, intelligent people in every position all corners of the organization and you know it seems to me like everybody's been pulling on the same rope for five years now um, which is you know incredible so um, it's it's really a, a pleasure uh, to work with the people that we have in the Orioles organization our managing partner uh, John Angelos has put a ton of uh, faith and trust and he empowered our baseball operations department uh, to carry out the rebuild and uh, you know we're, we're going to try to take it even further if we can. So let, let me ask you this too Mike I mean obviously you're the boss and you put this thing together uh, as you knew you were getting this job were there certain people you're like okay I got to have this person I'm going to pluck this idea this person with me how, how do you put together a group when you start from the ground zero. Well, um, my very first hire was uh, Sig Meidel, who's our assistant general manager and is kind of, he's really the most experienced analytics person in, in baseball right now. He's been doing it for like 20 years, really since the start of the uh, movement. Um, he was a free agent at the time that I got the job and we uh, quickly added him and signed him because Baltimore didn't have much of a analytics department at that time. So that was the first step. Uh, Kobe Perez uh, launched our international program from scratch. Um, we hired him from Cleveland. Um, so we just went around kind of methodically and um, filled the key spots and inherited a lot of good people too that are that are still working here. Um, so you know it's something that you, you can't rush. Uh, these decisions are very important. Um, I, I feel like we were very thoughtful about everything that we did in putting the organization together and we also um, hired a wonderful manager right out of the shoot. Brandon Hyde uh, was at the winter meetings um, hired about a couple weeks after I took the job. So really had some good fortune with some early hires and I think it's it's shown. Mike it, you know, as recently as 2021 uh, as you're well aware the Orioles had lost as many as 110 games and when you came aboard things were not easy. This was not a slam dunk certainly I, I guess and I know this is a very complicated and long answer potentially but if you could put into words for somebody who's inheriting a club and maybe walking into the same thing you walked into at the start of the 2019 season what would be among the most important things the first things that you implement to try to change into a winning culture. Uh, boy that 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 is a good question it's a tough one um, I really felt the benefit of having uh, been a big part of the Astros rebuild from like 2012 to 2015 um, Jim Crane Jeff Luno um, really uh, put that together fast and it was very aggressive and um, we were just so focused on the end goal of getting the team back to the playoffs 
um, as quickly as possible, but really whenever possible, that we just kept kind of pushing in the right direction and all of a sudden the door popped open and that kind of happened in Baltimore. We didn't script a timetable. We didn't have specific plans of well, we're going to sign this player and this year and we're, you know, we just kept amassing young talent, uh, making good hires, equipping the people up and down the organization with the most freedom and best information possible to do their jobs well and uh, the results um, were kind of secondary. So, you know, it's cliched, but, uh, you know, it's definitely a, a process and uh, adherence to that, I think, has um, been a big advantage in both of the rebuild, rebuilds that I've been fortunate to be a part of. All right, we've kept you pretty comfortable because you're comfortable talking about other people. But I want to ask you, Executive of the Year, what's this mean to Mike? What's this mean to you? Well, it's cool. Uh, you know, the, the group, as you said, it's voted on by uh, peers and other executives in MLB. And, you know, this is a really uh, talented, savvy, competitive group of people. So, um, you know, to get recognized amongst that group and, and by that group um, is hard to do. And uh, it's a huge compliment. Mike, we have a photo here. We've been getting, I know you have a monitor there. We understand there are more ballpark revisions planned at Camden Yards. Eventually, you'll get to a point where you could sign every <laughs> right handed free agent pitcher ever to play uh, when this is finally done. Any thoughts? Yeah, the, the, uh, the, the wall's <laughs> been a lot of fun. Uh, I, it's, you know, it's not perfect, uh, but very quickly we needed, to, we needed to make it more of a pitcher's park, and that was the way we figured out how to do it in two months in the middle of a lockout. So, uh, it, you know, say what you want. I feel like it has worked. It has helped bring has winning worked. baseball back. We have a, mu a much better environment for our young pitchers, which was the main reason that we did it. Um, we're not super popular with the right-handed hitters on our team, Austin Hayes, <laughs> Ryan Mountcastle, but I, I, think, I think they've gotten over it and they enjoyed being in first place all year and they're on board. Hey, look, everybody has to play there. It's, not, it's, it's, uh, it's uh, you look, I mean, you said it. It's worked and it's been super smart and I am all for that kind of revision. It makes the game interesting. It makes it fun to watch. Uh, I'm glad I'm not a right-handed hitter for the first time in my life. I'm glad I have no ability uh, because that, that would be a tough pill to swallow. But, Mike, man, congratulations on what you've accomplished. We appreciate uh, your time with us. Uh, very generous in giving us a little bit of time here. And enjoy uh, the award. Enjoy the rest of the meetings. Cheers to you. Have a nice bottle of wine tonight. Way to go.